Hey, all white like Comissa, I got TZ in my swisher. I drop two cups in August, swear that mix they too official. Got two of everything, two watches, two chains, and two pistols. Not just two pistols, two pistols, all watches. <laughs> hey man, what's good with y'all boys? Y'all see we back out here on this Tony Yoko Pong. So today we about to do another rapper reaction, and y'all already know what rapper we reacting to, man. If you do not know the song, I would just sing the intro, bro. What is you doing? We about to be reacting to Young Pappy, man. And shout out to Publish S. We gonna react to another one of his documentaries, like we did speaking of Chris. The way he just mixes uh, like the songs in and all that is just so fire man shout out to him so yeah man young pappy bro he was like also another one of my favorite rappers like growing up um during like um my ninth grade year bro that's when he just like really started blowing up but he passed like he passed away his young was really weird like this happened with a lot of rappers but like you swear nobody knew about young pappy before he was like when he was alive then as soon as he died like his young just went up bro you feel what i'm saying so that's when i found out about him too unfortunately man i wish i would have been new about him maybe he probably would have i don't know bro hey but yeah make sure y'all follow all my socials down below man send me some more videos to react to man and also comment who's y'all favorite rapper bro who was y'all favorite rapper from chicago like i said i rock with chicago a lot man they had some great people to come out of they man so yeah without that said man no more talk let go to hop to this reaction man hey. all right here we go y'all boys the real young pappy story documentary really get into it man young pappy is one of chicago's most infamous rappers some even refer to him as one of the greatest to come out of the city if you were tuned into chicago's drill movement at the time you know just how crazy things were moving then yeah, rappers were blowing up overnight and the city was on fire Unfortunately, as fast as some of them were blowing up, they were also becoming targets, and many lost their lives. Yep. Young Pappy had no shame in living a savage life, and he enjoyed taunting his ops to take their best shot at him. They tried, and failed multiple I times. I ain't even gonna lie, bro. Pappy was hard, bro, but I don't know what he had on in this killer. Like, in the killer video, bro, that man had on, like, the weirdest outfit. It was like a, a pajama. It was like a pajama little, uh... <laughs> I don't even know, hey Peppy, bro, you the goat, bro, but I don't know what you was doing with that outfit that time. Hunting his ops to take their best shot at him. They tried and failed multiple times, creating an untouchable aura for Pappy. Yeah, he These the stories shit, made his music as real as it gets. Damn. 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 TLC Streets, Young Pappy. Uh, he was a young rapper, local rapper, who glorified gun violence and gang life, and now he's dead. As you're about to hear, some people say Dang. that was inevitable, but it was the innocent bystanders who lost their lives because of the way that young Pappy lived. Man, it's a joke. Pappy, whose real name is Shaquan Thomas, is from the uptown side of Chicago. Unlike most, he started rapping as early as four years old after his brother Boo Double taught him. It's told he would sit around the house reading the dictionary to learn new words he could rhyme with. Pappy was a name his grandmother gave him, so he took it and never looked back. As early as 2007, he started uploading songs to YouTube and other platforms, despite only being 12 years old at the time. His parents were split up, so they moved around a lot, but in his early teens, he mostly stayed with his dad in an area known as Rogers Park. His mother says he started to hang around a different crowd that was already involved in the streets. Initially getting into small fights and bringing weed to school was the most he got caught up in. But as the juvenile arrest started to add up, he only got more involved in the streets. He eventually claimed the sets TFG and PBG. Because he moved around a lot, he was involved in both. PBG or Pooh Bear Gang is a set of gangster disciples that used to also go by the name the Insane Cutthroat Gangsters. It got its name after one of its members named Pooh Bear was shot and killed in 2012, and he was good friends with young Pappy. Pappy later wrote on his Facebook about how he would get revenge for Pooh Bear, and he would make his ops feel the same pain he felt. TFG is another set of gangster disciples in the uptown area where Pappy spent a lot of time too. They were both notorious gangs and had issues with multiple other sets. As Pappy got more involved, he found himself in and out of juvie which was starting to take a toll on him. While behind bars for a gun charge, he started to think about how he should take his rapping more serious. Everyone in the neighborhood already knew him for his rapping skills but he just wasn't releasing any music very often. When he was released, he went home and downloaded Audacity on his computer, and he remixed a few songs, including Drake and 2 Chainz' No Lie track. Even though his bars were heavy, he didn't like how the song came out, so he invested money into his studio microphone. Although he released a few songs, Pappy was still very active in the streets, and his music was inconsistent. Bro, just imagine, bro, if he just would've put all his focus into his rapping, bro, like, it's crazy, man. But I ain't even gonna lie, like, it's like, a lot of people glorify, you know, they glorify all of the, like, you know, bad stuff that come with it, like, all the drilling. They really love that, like, bro, it just seemed like, so it, like, to, like, little kids, bro, it seemed like, oh, that's so hard, bro, the whole time, bro. Soon as they die, people like, man, you shouldn't have been doing that, you feel me? It's like a lose-lose situation, bro. Honestly, man. 
So I just say, bro, what I say, everything is entertainment, bro. You ain't really gotta be if you you ain't really gotta be drilling like that. You feel me to actually blow up off of it, bro. Like you know, it's a lot of rappers that be talking about it or they talk about past stuff. They move out. See, Pat Buller just go ahead. And, like he wasn't big enough to where he could have probably moved and still rap about his old stuff. You feel what I'm saying? His mother would later come out and say that Pappy wasn't really about that life and that he was only putting on a persona to get his music career popping. But the streets mm. told a different story. Oh, nah, yeah, he was really like that. No, mama, come on, I don't do that to Pappy. My life. In 2013, PBG and a set called Loke City were in the middle of a deadly beef. It's rumored that Pappy became a large target for Loke City that year, after he allegedly shot and wounded one of their members named Lucky. Pappy went straight to the studio and put a bar in a song titled Competition about the event. Despite him fighting a case at the time, he was still riding around raining havoc on Loke City. On July 4, 2013, young Pappy allegedly caught his first body. The victim was identified as Blake Lamb, and the shooting has gone down as one of the most gruesome murders in the Chicago drill scene. Oh, yeah. Blake was walking in the Rogers Park neighborhood when a vehicle with Pappy and a few other members from PBG, TFG pulled up on him. Shots rang off as the victim fell to the floor, but wanting to send a message to Loke City, they hopped out and proceeded to shoot him over eight times in the face. Oh, the craziest part of this murder is that Pappy and a few PBG members spun back to the crime scene after the paramedics arrived. They even took videos that they later posted. Bro, I ain't gonna lie, I heard about that shooting like the Blake dude. I didn't know Pappy did that. Like, that's crazy, bro. It's kind of like demonic though, Pappy, bro. You shot that man eight times in the face, bro. Sheesh. Posted and deleted on Facebook. Residents in the area began reporting to the authorities how unsafe the neighborhood was becoming. Not only was Pappy starting to be a huge target for Loke City and other sets like Day Day World, but his name was even reaching the Chicago Police Department now too. Day Day World members would take the life of his friend nicknamed Two Cups in November of 2013. This would lead to Pappy naming a series of mixtapes and songs nah, after him, Two song. Cups Part 1, 2, and 3. As his name spread, his music started to get noticed more as well. Some of his songs started to circulate and do decent numbers. Pappy would slide on Day Day World looking for revenge, all while he was still being targeted by Loke City. They were watching everything Pappy did. It's uptown! It's the real shot when we catch more bodies than the real out rat. Y'all don't know about that. Oh, yeah, this is one video Pappy chased him like down. In February of 2014, he and a few others were headed to McDonald's around 3 in the afternoon. Loke City members pulled up wearing masks, letting off rounds. Pappy, along with a few bystanders, were all hit, but survived the attempted assassination. His 17-year-old friend Markio died on the scene though. It was later confirmed Pappy was the intended target. Just after releasing his song Two Cups in March of 2014, Pappy was sentenced to 60 days on a reckless conduct charge. While he was gone, the song started to get its recognition in the city, and a real buzz was now forming. When he was released, he immediately got to work on new music, seeing the momentum he was building. On June 3rd, Pappy was with his photographer taking pictures near his dad's house for his upcoming mixtape. A car passed by and spotted Pappy on the street. They spun back around and proceeded to chase Pappy down the block. He ultimately got away, but the innocent photographer was killed in the crossfire. Wow. This was one of the reasons the police was now watching Pappy. Dang, bro, Pappy. So that's done two people he done got, like, killed just because they trying to get this man, bro. They was trying to get him killed so bad, bro. It's so sad, like, bro. It's just so sad, bro. Like, god dang, bro. His music was taking off, and he had now survived two attempts on his life. Dang, people in the area were now unhappy with the attention his music was bringing and how innocent people were injured or killed in both events. Dang. The police became eager to get Pappy off the streets but had nothing to charge him with at the time. Just months later, another Loke City member named Munchie was also gunned down. Oh, and it was again rumored that Pappy along with others were involved. Immediately after, Pappy hit the booth and dropped lines about Munchie's death in his Finito remix and his song After Dark Part 3 before releasing his biggest song to date, Killa. The song got millions of views, bringing his Wait, name outside the city now too. Angel. He never held back in his lyrics, and it's one of the reasons he was starting to really blow up. In early 2015, it didn't take long for the police to come looking for Pappy again. Mm. This time he got in a fist fight at the same McDonald's he was shot at the year before. He ended up fighting and shooting a man in the leg. Although he wasn't charged with the shooting, the police suspected him, and as I mentioned before, they were looking for a reason Dang, to lock him bro. up. Listen, if they would've just, if they would've like, 
got him for that charge, he probably would have still been alive right now. Like, bro, that's crazy because he didn't. How y'all didn't go? Y'all knew he shot him in the foot. Y'all should just go and arrest him. Man, boy would have still been alive. The police would storm his mother's home with guns drawn and spent hours looking for a weapon, oh, but never are. found one. Damn. However, he did spend 28 days behind bars for another reckless conduct charge. Once again, while locked up, he got Damn. to thinking about his music career and how close he was to taking things so to a new to level. Going. I put both hands together as I pray for the first day. Praying to God I get to see another birthday. Cause shit is crazy, man. This shit I've been through lately, man. This shit I go through daily. It can't make, but it can break me, man. Can't take myself. Be so I can't take myself. Be so I can't take myself. Can't take myself cause I'm on this road. In May, he released his project, Two Cups Part Two, which had the whole hood going crazy. To celebrate, Pappy planned a mixtape release party, and also for his 20th birthday, which was just a few days away. During the party, neighbors started to hear gunshots being let off in the air. They reported this to the authorities, who took no chances now that Pappy was so well known. They sent a SWAT team of over 50 people to the party and surrounded his house. Dang. 150 people were arrested, and the last to leave the home was no other than Pappy himself, in handcuffs, mocking the police. He along with 30 others were charged with the misdemeanor. But Pappy bonded out the same day and released his song Shooters with the music video. Oh yeah, that's something. Pappy had the whole city on lock for a few months, applying pressure with his music. His name was spreading fast and people were just starting to recognize his lyrical ability. Mm. Other rappers co-signed Pappy and said he was going to be Chicago's Bro, next superstar. Bro, Montana was about to sign too. But just a week later, on May 29th, Pappy was walking with a friend on the 4800 block of North Kenmore Avenue. It was 1.30 in the morning, and it's unclear where he was headed. Dang. Two gunmen approached him from behind, and shot him in the back two times, paralyzing his body. He was rushed to the local emergency room, where he was pronounced dead at 3 in the morning. Pappy's death was very controversial, and many theories about what happened came out. It, it was hard for people to believe that someone snuck up on him at 1 in the morning, leading some to think it was a setup. Rumors that someone close to Pappy or even the police must have given his location away for him to have his guard down like that. Yeah. It even came to light that Pappy was on the top of a list that the Chicago Police Department had. It was of people they believe were going to shoot or be shot. Mm. Although Pappy was now gone, the aftermath was even worse as retaliation for his death was in full effect. The north yeah. side of Chicago only became more of a war zone a and Pappy yeah, left his chill. mark on the city. Little After shot. his passing, his music would continue to gain popularity as news of his death spread. Millions of more views poured in on his YouTube channel from new fans who only discovered his talent after his passing. Mm -hmm. Pappy never got to receive the full credit he deserved while he was alive for the impact he had on the drill movement in Chicago. In the opinion of many, his flow, energy, and lyrics have yet to be matched by anyone coming out of the city. It was later revealed he was about to sign his first record deal with Atlantic. Unfortunately, he really lived everything he talked about and the streets took him before he could ever make it out with his music. All right, y'all boys, man, so that's it for this banger reaction, man. Look, it's just real sad what happened to Pappy, but, like, uh, y'all be always, like, mocking, like, people that don't live that life when they in, like, in their raps, but the people that do live it, like, it always, if you got a favorite rapper, bro, and y'all claim he not about that life, bro, it's actually a good thing because y'all don't want him to be dead or in jail, honestly, bro, you feel me? We got to stop doing that. It's all just music at the end of the day, bro. It's all entertainment, you feel what I'm saying? Without that saying, man, I love y'all boys, man, and uh, be safe out here, man.